They tell you the future is green. They show you gleaming solar farms stretching across deserts. They show you silent electric vehicles humming down clean highways. They promise a clean utopia powered by the sun and the wind. It is a beautiful vision. It is also a mathematical lie. What they don't tell you, what they are desperately hoping you never figure out, is that this entire future is built on a foundation of a single metal that we are actively running out of. Every solar panel installed on a rooftop is a silver coffin. Every advanced piece of electronics is a graveyard for this essential element. We aren't just using silver, we are destroying it. We are taking a scarce, geologically finite resource, scattering it in microscopic amounts across the globe and burying it in landfills. For decades, the financial world has treated silver as a second-class citizen to gold, a volatile trading card, a poor man's hedge. But geology doesn't care about financial derivatives. Physics doesn't care about paper contracts. There is a collision coming, a collision between political fantasy and physical reality. And when the industrial giants, the companies tasked with building this green future, realize the vaults are empty, the panic buying won't be for stocks. It won't be retail investors lining up for coins. It will be a desperate, violent scramble for physical metal by the largest corporations on Earth fighting to keep their factory doors open. Welcome to the story of the vanishing metal. To understand the catastrophe we are sleepwalking into, you first have to unlearn everything you think you know about precious metals. You have to understand the fundamental, irreconcilable difference between gold and silver. Gold is money. It has always been money. But more importantly, gold is immortal. Because it is so valuable and because it is chemically inert, almost every ounce of gold ever mined in human history still exists today. It sits in central bank vaults. It sits in jewelry boxes. It sits in investment safes. When demand for gold rises, the price goes up and people sell their hoards back into the market. The above ground supply of gold is constantly growing. It is a hoarded asset. Silver is radically different. Silver has a dual personality. Yes, it has a monetary history over 5,000 years old. But today, silver is primarily an industrial metal. It is the most electrically conductive metal, the most thermally conductive metal, and the most reflective metal on the periodic table of elements. There is no substitute for silver in high performance electronics. You cannot cheat physics. If you want the fastest data transfer, the most efficient solar energy conversion, or the most reliable electrical contact, you must use silver. But here's the trap. It is used in tiny amounts. A laptop might contain a dollar's worth of silver. A solar panel might contain $15 worth. Because the amount per unit is so small, it is economically impossible to recycle it from most consumer goods. When you throw away an old iPhone or a microwave, or when a solar panel dies after 25 years, that silver doesn't go back into a vault. It goes into a landfill. It is lost forever. Gold is hoarded. Silver is consumed. It is burned up by industry. For the last 70 years, since the post-war industrial boom, we have been drawing down the massive above-ground stockpiles of silver that humanity accumulated over millennia. We have turned immense government stockpiles into iPhones, flat-screen TVs, and Tomahawk missiles. Then we buried them. We have moved from an era of abundance to an era of scarcity. And we did this before the world decided to electrify everything. This brings us to the accelerant, the gasoline poured on the fire. If silver demand were purely organic, driven by normal free market growth in electronics, we might face a slow, steady squeeze over decades. But we are not in a free market. We are in a managed economy driven by political mandates. Enter the green transition, the Paris Agreement, net zero 2050, the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, the European Green Deal. These aren't suggestions. They are laws. They are treaties. They are trillions of dollars of government stimulus printed out of thin air and fire-hosed into specific industries with a single goal total electrification of the global economy to combat climate change. Governments around the world have legally committed themselves to phasing out fossil fuels. They have mandated the end of the internal combustion engine. They have set legally binding targets for renewable energy generation. To achieve these targets by 2030 or 2050 requires an industrial build-out on a scale never before attempted in human history. We are talking about replacing the entire energy infrastructure of the planet in less than 30 years. They want terawatts of installed solar capacity. They want hundreds of millions of electric vehicles on the road. They want a smart grid connecting it all, processing data at light speed, powered by AI. Every single component of this mandated future requires silver. An electric vehicle uses significantly more silver than a gas-powered car. In the battery management systems, the dozens of computers driving the vehicle, and the electrical contacts. The charging stations required to power them need silver. The 5G towers beaming data to the smart grid need silver. The AI data centers crunching the numbers for energy optimization are massive consumers of high-end electronics, all dependent on silver. But the 800-pound gorilla, the industry that is about to break the silver market's back, is solar, photovoltaics, PV. 
solar energy is no longer a niche hobby for off-grid hippies. It is the central pillar of global energy policy. The mandates require solar capacity to double, triple, and quadruple in the coming years. In 2023 alone, the world installed hundreds of gigawatts of solar power. The projections for 2025, 2028, and 2030 show a vertical adoption curve. Governments are subsidizing it, mandating it on new construction, and pouring capital into manufacturing. This sounds like progress. It sounds like salvation. But to a geologist or an industrial supply chain expert, it sounds like a recipe for disaster. Because the politicians passing these laws do not understand the periodic table. They think you can legislate supply. They think if you print enough money, the copper, lithium, and silver will just appear. They are wrong. We have created a situation where the demand for silver is no longer cyclical. It's not dependent on whether the economy is booming or in recession. The demand is now structural. It is legislated. It is guaranteed by the full force of global government policy. We are forcing a massive, exponential increase in the consumption of a metal that we are already consuming faster than we can mine it. We are taking the vanishing metal and accelerating its disappearance. This is the setup. We have a metal that is essential, non-substitutable by physics, and consumed in use. We have depleted decades of stockpiles. And now, every government on Earth has simultaneously pushed a button, launching the greatest demand shock for that metal in history. In the next section, we will look at the hard data that proves why this equation cannot balance. We will look at the lie of thrifting, the technological shifts in solar that are making things worse, and the geological brick wall that the green dream is about to crash into. We established the trap. A legally mandated exponential explosion in demand for a metal we are already consuming and throwing away. Now, we must look at the cold, hard mathematics of why this cannot work. The mainstream narrative, peddled by financial media and green energy optimists, relies on a single magical concept to explain away the silver problem. They call it thrifting. The argument goes like this. Yes, solar panels use silver, but human ingenuity is limitless. Engineers are constantly finding ways to use less silver per solar cell. Therefore, even as the number of solar panels skyrockets, the total amount of silver needed will stay flat or even decline. This is the comforting lie that allows policymakers to sleep at night. It is also dead wrong. It is true that for the last decade, the solar industry has aggressively thrifted silver. They have shaved the amount used per cell down significantly. They had to because silver is expensive, but there are limits to this trajectory. Now you hit the floor of physics. Silver is used because it is the best conductor. If you use too little, the efficiency of the solar panel drops. The electricity gets lost as heat before it ever leaves the panel. In the race for green energy, efficiency is everything. A panel that converts 22% of sunlight into electricity is vastly more valuable than one that converts 18%. And this is where the thrifting narrative completely falls apart. We are currently undergoing a massive technological shift in solar manufacturing that is actually increasing silver consumption. For years, the industry standard was a technology called PER-C. We had optimized silver use in PERC cells almost to the limit but PERC has hit its efficiency ceiling. It can't get much better. Now, the industry is rapidly retooling factories globally to switch to next generation technologies, primarily TOPCON, tunnel oxide, passivated contact, and HJT, heterojunction. These new technologies offer higher efficiencies, which is what the market and government mandates demand. But here's the dirty secret. TOPCON and HJT cells use significantly more silver than the old PERC cells. Some estimates suggest TopCon uses 50% to 80% more silver per watt than PERC. HGT can use even more. The industry is not thrifting, it is loading up. They are putting more silver into every panel to squeeze out a few more percentage points of electricity. Why? Because silver is still relatively cheap compared to the value of that extra energy over the 25 year life of the panel. So look at the math. Again, you have an exponential increase in the number of solar panels being manufactured globally. And simultaneously, you have a technological shift that increases the amount of silver used in each panel. Exponential growth times increased intensity equals a consumption curve that goes vertical. The solar industry alone is now consuming a massive percentage of total global annual mine supply. A decade ago, it was a niche user. Soon, it will threaten to consume half of everything we dig out of the ground. And that's just one industry. That's before you count EVs, AI servers, and 5G. So if demand is exploding, why don't we just mine more? That is the standard economist's response. If prices rise, supply will increase. This brings us to the geological reality that the green mandates are about to crash into. Silver supply is incredibly inelastic. It does not respond quickly to price. First, you have to understand where silver comes from. Very few mines in the world are primary silver mines, where silver is the main source of revenue. Over 70% of the world's new silver comes as a byproduct of mining other base metals. 
primarily lead, zinc, copper, and gold. A copper miner doesn't care about the price of silver. It's just extra cash to them. If copper prices are down due to a recession, they might close the copper mine, cutting off that silver supply completely, even if silver prices are sky high because of green energy demand. The supply of silver is held hostage by the economics of base metals. Second, we have picked all the low-hanging fruit, the high-grade, easy-to-access silver deposits were mined out decades or centuries ago. Miners are now forced to dig deeper, go to more remote locations, process much more rock, and use more energy just to get the same amount of metal. Ore grades are collapsing globally. It costs more to get less. Third, and most importantly, building a new mine is a nightmare. It is a multi-billion dollar, decade-long process. It takes an average of 10 to 15 years to take a deposit from initial discovery to the first pour of metal. You have to deal with increasingly strict environmental regulations, endless permitting delays, local community opposition, and massive capital costs that are subject to inflation. Even if silver went to $100 an ounce tomorrow and mining companies decided to build new mines immediately, it would take a decade for significant new supply to hit the market. The green energy mandates don't have a decade. They need that silver now. By 2026, by 2028, by 2030. The timelines do not match. We cannot bring new mines online fast enough to meet the legislated demand shock. The supply side is frozen while the demand side is strapped to a rocket. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at the data from the industry's own reporting bodies like the Silver Institute. For the last several years, the silver market has entered a new dangerous phase, a structural deficit. This means that every single year, total global demand from industry, jewelry, and investment combined is significantly higher than total global supply from mining and recycling. We aren't talking about small gaps that can be easily managed. We are talking about massive deficits amounting to hundreds of millions of ounces over just a few years. Where did the extra silver come from to fill that gap? How did the factories keep running? It came from the vaults. It came from the dwindling above ground stockpiles we discussed earlier. Look at the data from the COMEX in New York and the LBMA in London, the two major hubs where physical silver is stored to back the global trading markets. Since the start of the decade, those inventory levels have plummeted. They are draining at an alarming rate. Hundreds of millions of ounces have quietly left these exchanges. They haven't gone into investor safes to be hoarded. They have gone into industrial crucibles. They have been melted down, turned into paste for solar panels, and bolted onto rooftops across the world. They are gone. We are burning through the buffer. The cushion that has stood between industrial demand and mine supply is evaporating. The cushion that has allowed the paper markets to suppress the price of silver for decades is disappearing. This is the mathematical failure of the green energy transition. You have legislated an infinite demand for a finite resource. You have ignored the physics of solar technology that requires more silver, not less. And you have ignored the geological reality that supply cannot catch up. We are running a deficit economy on a critical resource. And like any deficit, eventually the bill comes due. In the previous sections, we laid out the inescapable trap. Mandated exponential consumption meets geological scarcity. We prove that the math does not balance. Now we look at the end game. How does this resolve? Currently, the world operates under an illusion. The price of silver you see on your screen, the spot price, is not the price of physical metal. It is the price of paper contracts representing silver. The silver market is one of the most highly leveraged markets in the world. For every ounce of real physical silver sitting in a COMEX vault, there are untold numbers of paper claims trading against it. Banks, hedge funds, and high-frequency traders swap these paper claims back and forth billions of times a day, setting the price. This paper market works beautifully as long as everyone is happy trading paper. As long as confidence remains that if you wanted the silver, you could get it. It's a game of musical chairs where there are a hundred people in only one chair, but the music never stops. But the structural deficit we discussed, uh, the relentless draining of physical vaults by industry, is eroding the foundation of this paper market. The leverage is becoming unsustainable. The paper market is pricing silver as if it were an abundant, easily sourced commodity. It reacts to Federal Reserve interest rate decisions and dollar strength, ignoring the physical reality on the ground. Meanwhile, the physical market is screaming that silver is a scarce, critical mineral running in a deep deficit. This divergence cannot last forever. Reality always wins. The music is about to stop. The moment this illusion shatters won't begin in a hedge fund office in Manhattan. It will begin in a procurement office in Silicon Valley or Tokyo or Shenzhen. The trigger will be an industrial crisis. Imagine a major industrial user, a company like Tesla, Apple, Samsung, or a massive solar manufacturer like Jinko Solar. Their entire business model, their stock price, their very existence depends on continuous production lines. They operate on just-in-time, jitty inventory systems, keeping only a few days or weeks of raw materials on hand to maximize efficiency and free up capital. 
One day, the procurement officer for one of these giants places their usual order for silver industrial bars, or silver paste, to keep the factory running for next month. But instead of a standard confirmation, they get a phone call from their supplier. The supplier says, I'm sorry, we don't have the physical metal right now. The refineries are backed up. The vaults are empty. We can't get the feedstock. We are on back order for six weeks. Six weeks. For a company like Apple or Tesla, shutting down production lines for six weeks is not an inconvenience. It is a catastrophe measured in billions of dollars of lost revenue and stock market devastation. It is unacceptable. What happens next? That procurement officer doesn't look at the COMEX paper price on their screen and say, oh well, the price is down today, guess I'll wait. No, they panic. They have a mandate to secure metal at any price to keep the factory doors open. The cost of the silver itself is minuscule compared to the cost of shutting down the entire company. They get on the phone, they scramble. They call every refinery, every bullion dealer, every vault operator globally. They say, I need 10 million ounces of physical silver delivered by Friday. I don't care what the spot price is. Name your price, just get me the metal. This is the moment the paper market dies. When one industrial giant starts panic buying, it's not a secret. The word spreads instantly through the tight-knit global supply chain. Other industrial users realize the danger immediately. The fear of missing out. FOMO isn't about making a quick profit. It's about corporate survival. Suddenly, every major electronics and green energy manufacturer is trying to secure strategic stockpiles of physical silver simultaneously. They abandon decades of just-in-time efficiency for just-in-case survival. They bypass the comics paper market entirely. They go direct to the source, bidding against each other for whatever physical metal is left above ground in independent vaults and refineries. This is an industrial squeeze. It is far more violent and sustained than an investor squeeze. Investors can be shaken out by volatility. They can be convinced to sell their stacks back into the market for a nice profit. An industrial user must have the metal to exist. They cannot sell their silver back. They need to consume it to make their product. Their demand is price inelastic. They will pay whatever it takes because they have no choice. In this scenario, the paper spot price becomes irrelevant. It becomes a zombie number on a screen that reflects a market where no actual metal is changing hands. The real price of silver is whatever Tesla or Samsung has to pay a refinery in Switzerland to put actual bars on a plane tonight. This leads to the violent upward revaluation of silver. When the industrial panic sets in, silver decouples from gold, it decouples from the dollar. It stops behaving like a precious metal influenced by interest rates and starts behaving like what it truly is, a critical, scarce industrial material in a severe shortage. We have seen this happen in other commodities. Look at rhodium, a niche metal used in catalytic converters to reduce emissions. When supply got tight and automotive demand remained strong, it went from $700 an ounce to over $20,000 an ounce in just a few years. It didn't matter what the technical chart said. The industry needed it to sell cars, and there wasn't enough. Silver is heading for a similar unobtainium moment, but on a much larger scale, affecting vastly more industries. How high can it go? In a true shortage, price has no ceiling until it destroys demand. But as we've discussed, the green energy demand is mandated by governments. They can't just stop building solar panels because silver hits $100 or $200 an ounce. They have legally binding climate targets to meet. Furthermore, because silver is used in such small amounts per unit, the price can rise dramatically before it significantly impacts the final cost of the end product. Silver at $500 an ounce might add in only $20 or $30 to the cost of an iPhone or a Tesla. The consumer will pay it. The demand will not break easily. We are facing a future where silver is no longer available to the average investor at anything resembling today's prices. We are facing a future where national mints, like the US Mint or the Royal Canadian Mint, stop producing silver eagle and maple leaf coins for the public. Governments may even step in. If silver is deemed a critical mineral, essential for national security and energy transition, which the US government has already done, they could nationalize mines or restrict private ownership to ensure strategic industries have first priority. The window to acquire physical silver at these suppressed paper market prices is closing. It is closing not because of financial speculation or YouTube hype, but because of undeniable geological and industrial reality. The green energy future they promised you is coming, but it is bringing a mathematical reckoning with it. The vanishing metal is about to reveal its true value to the world. The only question left is, will you hold it in your hands before the industrial giants take it all?